Calvin Coolidge said this at the dedication of his monument in Washington, D.C. Who shall say where his influence, written on the immortal souls of men, shall end? Lincoln heard of him in his youth. Adams and Jefferson must have known him. And Jackson must have seen in him a flame spirit as unconquerable as his own. He is entitled to rank as one of the builders of our nation. And that flame spirit began his career here. St. George's Chapel in Philadelphia, the cradle of American Methodism, and the denomination's oldest church in continuous use. What happened here more than 240 years ago would transform religion in America. Francis Asbury, after a 53-day, 3,600-mile ocean voyage from England, was received in this chapel in October 1771. Asbury, the architect of the Methodist Church in the States and the first bishop of the Methodist Church in America, started his career right here and he never returned to England. Asbury wrote in his journal, we were brought in the evening to a large church where we met a considerable congregation. The people looked on us with pleasure, hardly knowing how to show their love sufficiently, bidding us welcome with fervent affection and receiving us as angels of God. The son of an English farm laborer, Francis Asbury was not a highly educated man. He was born into a working class Anglican family. He dropped out of school before he was 12 to work as a blacksmith's apprentice. And by the time he was 14, he had been awakened in the Christian faith. According to biographer Ezra Tipple, Asbury's preaching was more zeal than art, yet highly effective. Tipple wrote, there were occasions when under the rush of his utterance, people sprang to their feet as if summoned to the judgment bar of God. Within days of being received by the St. George's congregation, he went into the mission field. He preached everywhere he could, pushing himself so hard that he fell ill that first winter in America. This was the beginning of a pattern. Over the next 45 years, he suffered from colds, coughs, ulcers, and eventually chronic rheumatism, which forced him off his horse and into a carriage. Yet he continued to preach. Organization was Asbury's gift. He created districts of churches, each of which would be served by circuit riders, preachers who traveled across America to preach and minister, especially in rural areas. Though he spent his life traveling, he insisted on riding inexpensive horses and using cheap saddles and riding gear. Francis faced poor roads, if there were any roads at all, difficult trails, wild environment, all kinds of weather, and he encountered hostels with scant support and he was often shot at. This was Asbury's saddlebag that kept dry nearly everything he owned, his spectacles, his pocket watch, and of course, his Bible. But also inside was his powder horn. Although Asbury admonished preachers under his charge against garnishing weapons, most circuit riders carried a pistol to hunt while on the road. Asbury hated slavery and petitioned George Washington to enact anti-slavery legislation. He wrote in his journal, O oh Lord, banish the infernal spirit of slavery from thy dear Zion. He also ordained Richard Allen, the first African-American Methodist preacher and the founder of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. In 2016, a stamp honoring Allen was issued by the United States Postal Service. Asbury had the numbers to prove he was the ultimate leader and circuit rider. With no home of his own and never marrying, Asbury was always in the saddle. For 41 years, he rode on horseback nearly 300,000 miles, preached 16,000 sermons, and ordained 4,000 ministers. And while bishop, the ratio growth of Methodism outpaced the growth of the U.S. population. 
But those impressive numbers would never have been possible without a special meeting that occurred 13 years after being received in Philadelphia. The meeting was held near Dover, Delaware, and would give birth to the Methodist Church. Barrett's Chapel in Delaware. It's here that Asbury met with Thomas Koch in November 1784. Koch, the first Methodist bishop from England, would explain to Francis that John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, had given authority to him to ordain Asbury. However, Asbury, catching the spirit of democracy in the new country, suggested that his ordination should occur and be approved by the whole American connection of Methodist preachers. At Barrett's Chapel, Asbury and Koch planned a meeting, of course, to be convened in Baltimore. Asbury summoned all Methodist preachers to Lovely Lane Chapel, just a day's ride by horseback from Barrett's. At Lovely Lane, Thomas Koch ordained Asbury as deacon, then elder, and finally superintendent, which was later changed to the more biblical title of bishop, the first Methodist bishop in America. The conference would be dubbed the Christmas Conference and would give birth to the Methodist Episcopal Church, known today as the United Methodist Church. Asbury died in 1816, pushing himself to the end. By the time of his death, the church had grown to 200,000, and by the Civil War, American Methodists numbered 1.5 million. He is an inspiration to all of us as United Methodists. What was in Asbury's spirit that can guide us into and across the new frontiers facing the United Methodist Church today? Like Asbury, we are still writing, still spreading the word of God's love in Jesus, still itinerating, still overcoming obstacles and challenges, still crisscrossing the mission field. What Asbury started here in America now extends around the world.